All right, so this is where you get buried. Apparently, if you had no money. All right, so right when this was taking place, I missed the shot, but she dived straight down there. She must have done this before, um, and he joined her, but they're a long way from shore. All right, so one thing you might want to do is bring a towel, but um, Europe is funny. Have y'all ever seen that movie Euro Trip? Sausage Fest on Earth. It's the International House of Sausage. Alright, so this is one crazy movie. Uh, this goes down with one of my favorites, like Beer Fest and Step Brothers, but Europe is very liberal, man. I mean, from the vending machines that had erotic stuff in it to the men that ain't really got on no clothes, the men got on less clothes than the women out here. I'm like, hey, sir, uh, where's the rest of your shorts at? But uh, <laughs> it just gets weird. Be careful, man. All right, all right, all right. And welcome back, y'all. All right, so that was a quick recap. Um, so this episode right here is gonna be Lost in Pompeii. The shore excursion is called Pompeii on your own. It's approximately $79. Uh, what's not included is the entrance free to get into Pompeii. I believe it's 22 euro. So if you were in the Naples Pompeii area and you were ever curious about what this excursion looks like, wait no further. This is going to be a um, in real life vlog. So go ahead and grab your backpack, water, mask. Let's hop on this board and take off. It's time. Let's go. 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 Let's why the Romans were attracted by this area, why they arrived here in the south of Italy. First of all, the Romans were attracted by the strategic position of this region on the Mediterranean Sea. Imagine that um, Rome was not built on the sea, so this became the most important port uh, for the capital of an empire like Rome. Another reason was the fertility, the fertility of the soil. In Campania we have many volcanic areas, not only Mount Vesuvius, the volcano that you can start to see in front of us. That's the volcano which destroyed Pompeii. So we don't have only Mount Vesuvius, but also um, another volcanic area which is huge, uh, the Phlegrean Fields, Camp Campi Phlegrei. So, a huge volcanic area with more than 40 craters uh, and the Romans used to call this area Campania Felix Campania Felix meant fertile, the fertile land so uh, least but not last the beauty of the landscape the Romans they were obsessed by beauty as you will see in Pompeii today um, for the Romans, everything should be amazing, everything should be stunning. That was their culture. So that's why they decided to uh, come here and to, and to conquer the coastline, the coastline of this region. This became the place for the Ozia. Ozia in Latin means relax. The place for the vacations and the holidays of the most important Roman emperors and the Roman aristocracy. In fact, as I told you, Pompeii is just the biggest archaeological site, but all over the coastline we have smaller... Oops! <laughs> Beautiful! <laughs> exactly. We are heavy. Yeah, we are too many. So... Beautiful, beautiful, uh, smaller archaeological areas. Look around Mount Vesuvius. We are three million people. Three million people that lives underneath the volcano, uh, one, million, one million only neighbors. Um, we have only this highway uh, in case of eruption, only this way to run in case of eruption. So 
3 million people, one highway, and we don't have a particular evacuation plan. Obviously, Mount Vesuvius is also one of the most studied volcanoes um, in the world. In fact, there is an observatory that you can see now uh, right in the middle, working 24 hours, but still it's very dangerous because uh, there are too many people living underneath the slopes. And the problem is that we know that it's still active and is like an atomic bomb. Um, instead, the Romans the Greeks, the Etruscans, the first inhabitants of this region, they didn't know that they lived underneath a volcano. They thought that Mount Vesuvius was just a beautiful fertile mountain. Instead now we know it and we still live here. We love living on the edge, no? So from here you can see the particular shape of this volcano. It has two peaks. Okay, you see the peak uh, on the right is the crater. There are beautiful tours. You can walk on the edge of the crater. You can look inside it and that's the new cone. Uh, to the left instead we have Mount Somma. Mount Somma or Punta Nasone, the big nose because it looks like a nose. So imagine that Mount Somma was part of the previous cone of Mount Vesuvius. So we have a new cone surrounded by a previous ancient caldera, okay? So if you join in your imagination the two peaks of the volcano, you can imagine how it was before the eruption of 1798. It had a completely different shape, a conical shape which changed after various eruptions, becoming the most famous symbol of this area. So from this, from this perspective in particular, a Celta Quiz, Mamma Mia, you see? In Campania we have many streets that we call Mamma Mia streets. <laughs> yes, Mamma Mia when, Yeah, when you drive here you can just say Mamma Mia. Yes, we say oh Mamma Mia or we invoke the Virgin Mary. In our dialect, Maronna Mia. <laughs> so, on the southern slope we have the Amalfi Coast. The Amalfi Coast is another UNESCO patrimony. It's still least uh, by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site because of the beauty and the particularity of the landscape. Uh, the island in the middle, that's Capri. That's the famous island of Capri. Uh, Capri is another famous touristy destination and uh, on the other side, you can see Napoli and the biggest <laughs> island of our archipelago, Ischia. That's Ischia, the Green Island also called the Green Island because that's, that huge mountain is another volcano. It's an ancient volcano that now, fortunately, is dormant. It's dormant since many, many centuries, but is um, it's still a very fertile island. So Capri Magin was fought by Augustus, the first Roman emperor. He came here, he fell in love with the island, and he decided to buy it, to exchange Capri with Ischia. But his successor, Tiberius, Tiberius, he decided to live the last years of his life on the island, and he abandoned Rome. He continued to rule the empire from that little island. And he made built 12 villas, 12 villas all around the coastline of the island, one of which was dedicated to a deity of the Roman pantheon. So the most beautiful villa that you can visit nowadays is Villa Jovis. Villa Jovis, the villa dedicated to Jupiter. From there the view is spectacular. You can see uh, both the Gulf of Naples and the Gulf of Salerno. So it, it has a very strategic position also. So a few minutes we will be in Pompeii. Uh, once in Pompeii, um, remember that uh, you are visiting the most important archaeological sites of the world. So please, it's very important, don't touch anything, okay? Be very careful, do not touch anything, do not lay on the frescoes, on the walls very important um, big backpacks are not allowed it so if you have big big backpacks you can leave them on the bus no worries our driver he will look after all your belongings 
and um, please don't use flesh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, welcome back. We are now in Naples. Today should be an interesting adventure. We are going to go visit Pompeii. Stand by. We're always getting into something. Let's see what we get in today. Trump Squad. Let's go. This kind of stuff always interests me. Let's go. We are in. Long line. But we've made it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's see what we will get into today. Gotta wear comfortable shoes. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, if he was bad back in the day, I'm not going to step on him. And you had a debt you wanted to pay, or you just want to do it for fun, you're doing a lunista. Doing a lunista. And one day, hoping to get your glory in the sands of Rome. So this right here is a training area. Uh, established in approximately about the 7th to 8th BC. This is where they got it on. They trained. This is their school. Oh, look, that looks like their, uh, I don't want to say amphitheater, but, you know, maybe like where they go like this. Go down. All right. Let's keep it going, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, how'd they get up there? You need the rest of them back here. Huh? I'm trying to see how they got up there. So far, so good. All right, this looks like a couple rooms. Maybe for the esclavas. Oh, there we go. I feel like a warrior in here. Know what I mean? Something like that. Let's go. Oh, it is an amphitheater. All right, we cannot see it from this side. Let's run down the other side. I don't know about y'all, but this type of stuff excites me, man. For guts or glory. Let's keep it moving. Hold on, what's in here? Casa de Fabio's Comendio. Don't worry, I'll wait for you, my God. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll wait for you. Don't rush. I know. Okay, so these are houses. Looks 
looks like up here. Maybe they're still trying to excavate or building something. Let's see what it says. This neighborhood is delimited to the north and the south by the two parallel east and west tracks of the Via Dinola and Via del Abizona, also listed as the main documentary of Pompeii, and is crossed by an uh, metered axis, partly excavated, partly documented from diagnostic investigations carried out on the plateau above it. Okay, so they're still excavating. Just as I thought. Now, I wonder if these signs are original. If it is, that is amazing. I don't know. This is, has to be original. It's in glass. Look at the colors, the decor. Okay, they got a garden in their house. Y'all see that way back there? There's art on the wall right there too. How's your uh, speed tour going? It's going good. I found a life hack. Oh. <laughs> go, go by the tour guide and listen to them. Then you'll know what's going on. <laughs> well, what the hey? The map don't do us any good. Exactly. <laughs> I've been stopping and listening to them. I've been hearing a little bit, bits and pieces. That's why I take all the signs and uh, re-look at it later. Exactly. Google it. To piece it together. <laughs> oh, look at that. It says on the wall on the right side of the bench there is a painted shrine in the shape yeah. of a little temple with Corinthian columns. In the middle, the house of gods, the genes sacrificing on the altar represented. On the two sides there were Mercury and Dionysus, protector of commerce and wine, all dominating the economy, snakes. Nice. Hello, hello, what's going on? I like this big cat picture this summer. So these right here is saying that they don't know what the holes were actually for. But I heard him say back there cooking or something like that. I heard, uh, one of the other guys said um, it was a way to um, either heat or cool the... The food, right? Or even the household. I mean, okay. put warm coals or whatever in there to heat the house or. To... So these might have been used as a way to no, heat or cool the house. Yeah. But obviously they're not latrines. So, excuse me. We got a well right here. You are visiting the most important archaeological sites of the world so please it's very important don't touch anything okay be very careful do not touch anything she said don't touch anything here Eureka! Don't tell nobody else. Can you take my picture here? Sure.
Okay, y'all, upon a further investigation, I'm starting to see these holes at every house. I am convinced that now they are a way to heat the house or cool the house. Let's keep pushing. And they still have the name of the homeowners. We got in here. Them a little garden in there too. Let's keep it, keep it moving. I'm not going down there. I'm convinced those are all still houses. We're gonna play some catch up. I'm trying to find the, the arena. Blood and sand. Hey, I've been told not to touch nothing. It's an archaeological site. I never was really good at directions. I just kind of do my own thing what's going on all right we got a sign here nave europa casa de ya nave she's talking about what happened to her speed walker we tired boss You can still see some of the original colors. All right, y'all stand by until I get uh, something more interesting. Nothing here, bro. Bunch of kids. Cause they're living nice in here. All right, so you know what? Hold on. Pedal. Oh, but like I was saying, I'm realizing that, I'm realizing that this is a old city. But even with the old city, there has to be, I've seen the amphitheater, but where is the Coliseum? Maybe we're gonna have to wait till Rome to go see that. I'm looking and not finding it. What is this? Okay. They're still excavating. Grande, Pogato, Pompeii. Y'all the first one to see this. Hey, y'all, look at this. They got smart. I try to pull the curtain back. You can't. But we can still look underneath. We can do this. Don't tell nobody else. All right, y'all, let me be completely honest with y'all. At this point, I don't know where I am or where I'm going or what I'm trying to see. 
I threw the map away because it was useless. But I should have kept it. At least it would have showed me something. Now, the weather's picking up. It's getting hot. It's dusty. And I still don't know where I'm going. So don't throw that map away. Look, you can still see the original black. And indigo. Check out these original paintings. Can't make out what that is, but it's covered in glass. That looks like a tiger. Maybe a horse or a bull. Oh, I can't tell what that is. That's, looks like a Giselle. can't tell what they're doing, but it looks nasty, nasty. All right, let's keep it moving. Got some pictures of Giselle's. And you get right into the nasty, nasty. Okay. They had a nice house. I imagine some type of statue used to stand right here. Whoa, it's windy up here. Dusty. Very dusty up here. I'm gonna act like it didn't say no entry. <laughs> I wonder what 
this area is. It's massive. But you know what? Y'all better start following the rules. Y'all better start following the rules. understand the English. Oh man, it's dusty down here. Gotta put on my bandana. Gosh. Stuff's flying everywhere. I think we found it, what I've been looking for. Is that blood and sand? Oh, we can't go in. No, we're gonna walk around it. I know I'm not the only one that's seen the movie Pompeii. They had gladiators there. They definitely had gladiators. Wow, look at all the dust. Look at that. Life hack, bring a mask. So they have stairs, but they're blocked. Let's see if we can see what's down here. That sign says something. Colonus. Honoris. Felicia. Oh, you can go in there. Felicia, you want in here? Oh. Yes. I feel like a warrior walking down to meet his fate. Yes, we got in here. See? Oh, blood and sand. Oh. This was the one thing I was looking for, and I found it. A 
in here. You could imagine the crowd roaring, screaming. The gladiators coming around. Are you not entertained? Oh, I'm sorry. I always wanted to do that. Always. Yes. <laughs> wow. This is beautiful. I just, I just, I can't still, I can't believe they built this shit with ropes. Just ropes and hang them up rocks. Maybe this is the holding places where they hold the gladiators that want to fight for their destiny. And fight a glorious death. Yes, we saw it. All right, now we can continue this journey on. That was very interesting, entertaining. I felt like my mission is accomplished today, but we're gonna keep moving. Let's see, what is over here? All right, so we've got some type of vineyard. Well, they're growing something, I can't tell. It was beautiful. They did have a cable car. They got I mean, just for now. Oh, yeah. Let's go back. No, we don't have time for this video. I don't know if I should go in here. Maybe I should close my eyes. It's getting nasty, nasty. Hello. Olives, chickpeas, split peas. These must these are probably all ancient relics. Their attention to detail was was great. I mean, it's amazing that this stuff has survived all these years. I really don't know what to say. I'm impressed.
Okay, so it was giving you the, basically the layout. The layout of the complex. It says the wall decoration is highly refined, fourth style, datable to the Claudian Neronian age, about the first century AD. It's inspired to a consistent, structured, figurative program referring to a top level cultural environment. Okay, so they have life size figures of Helen and Dioscuri. This is too cool. Maybe that's Helen? I'm not sure. Hopefully you all can see with the lighting. But. You could always slow it down and watch it again and replay if you want to. This is some real history level stuff right here. National Geographic. for wine. What is this? It says restoration is currently in progress. Pictorial decorations that showed a motif of festrums with fruits, flowers, birds, embellish the surface. Arte Sensualita Neye Casa del Pompe. Uh oh. It says the ubiquity of sensual and erotic images at Pompeii has astonished archaeologists and visitors right from the very first discoveries made in 1748. I thought I was the only one that was thinking this stuff was a little bit erotic. Everywhere I go, I see pictures of cocks and uh, sexual stuff. And, you know, in America, we can't do all that. But whatever. It's their culture. So what explanation can there be for a central role in the sensuality and the art of Pompeii, where erotic images can be found in, see, practically all areas of everyday life? I even see this stuff in the convenience stores. I'm like, yo, I don't want to see a picture of a dick while I'm eating. But anyways, uh... Sausage. Uh, this exhibition, which has been put together with works from the storerooms of the archaeological park of Pompeii, takes visitors on a tour of an ideal house explaining how sensual and erotic themes were an intrinsic part of the daily lives of the city of the inhabitants. Hmm. It might be nasty, nasty time. This might be rated R. That says, Narcissus looking at the at his reflection in the water of a cherub. I wonder if that's where the term narcissist comes from. Looking at himself. Hmm. Yo. Yeah. Y'all don't need to see all that. <laughs> What does it say? Statue Fountain of Propriopus, symbol of prosperity. What is this show? Maybe fertility? I'm, I'm guessing. It says a rural villa, which was a center of wine production in the agro Pomperian agriculture and land surroundings. The genius of the family carries out a sacrifice in the presence of the Lars. 
The snakes, which symbolize good luck, okay. Approach a dish laden with offerings, painted above the altar. The votive offering includes the head of a pig, spits, and a ham. They express the religious values of the family with an artistic language belonging to Italic tradition. All right, so I see the offering right there. Y'all see the snakes? Okay, there's a ham. Nice. All right. Metagloin. This is medallion depicting Miniad, a young satyr holding a silver drinking cup of wine. Okay. Got some ancient relics right here. That is an oil lamp with the depiction of an erotic scene. What? Even on their oil lamps? No, I'm going to have to cover this. Uh-uh. We know what was on their mind. Yo, what is that? Oh, we're gonna act like that. This is getting too hot for YouTube. It says among the receptions of the rooms of the rural villa, which specialize in wine production, one of the cubicula has a central painting with the small doors depicting an erotic scene on the three walls with a black background. Paintings of this kind are found in the more secluded bedrooms of houses. Bushes, silver drinking cups, basically of the walls. Okay. I'd hate to be a mind reader back then. You'd have to wear a condom. They have dirty minds. Yo! stuff here y'all just focus on his eyes all right what is this the triclinian rooms were illuminated not just as condylabras and oil lamps but also bronze statues lamp holders okay so this is a lamp holders the statue was used for the purpose at a later date with the addition of a vine shoot with a bunch of grapes on a tray which okay so maybe you put the tray right here Maybe you put the tray right here and grapes up there. I mean, who knows? Yo. What is that? Part of, it's a pair of dancing scimitars with the symbols of diagnostic procession. Nice. So they're dancing.
All right, so this is Venus. Another picture of Venus. What happened to her arm? Venus unfashioning her sandal. This pan with a basket of fruit and a goat's head. Okay. Pan with the head of an animal. So pan must be somebody important. I was always amazed by Greek mythology. There's a senator with a crater. Travis with a fawn. Is that no means no? I'm not sure. A satire and hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite? What? Maybe that was his name. Hermaphrodite asleep. Hermaphrodite asleep. River deity. Falcon headed crocodile. This looks Egyptian. This is a sphinx. This is satire. Young Hercules with a snake. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all have enjoyed this adventure with me. Very interesting day today, but I think that we've seen basically the main points of interest that I wanted to see, and I hope you all enjoyed the work. Make sure you hit a thumbs up. Where to next? Who knows? But I do feel like I've worked up an appetite right now, so let's go find some local food and get us something to eat here in Pompeii, a local meal. So, uh, also I would recommend this tour for any age group. They have tour guides here and stuff, but you kind of don't really. You do need it. No, I'll take that back. You do need it. Unless you're going to sit there and read, you know. 
but you won't understand what some of the stuff is you will not understand some of what's going on if sometimes if you don't have somebody explain to you so i kind of ear hustled and got my way through it but hey i'd have been lost on a lot of that stuff if i wouldn't have paid attention however wow look at the sheer beauty of this city Hold on, let me give you a look around the other side I don't know if y'all can see all the way over there. But we're gonna go try to find something to eat. I truly appreciate y'all taking the time out of your day to watch my content. Y'all could have been anywhere in the world, but you were rocking out with me, enjoying this wild and crazy Euro trip. Uh, remember that my videos are inspired by you all's likes, shares, and views. So do me a favor, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up, always. Hey, I hope you all enjoyed this longer um, in real lifestyle vlogging. Uh, there's more of it to come. I wanted you all to see what this is really like. So if you don't want to do it, guess what? I just saved you 100 euro. If you do want to do it, hey, you got some things to see. And I didn't even scratch the surface of this. It was so much to do there to where I was tired. Also, if y'all can't tell, I was lost at the end. I exited the wrong way and had to walk about 20 minutes back and I almost missed the bus. What you do not want to do is miss that bus because they will leave you. <laughs> that's why it pays to get a tour guide sometime I know I'm not the only one that made this mistake a lot of us made this mistake we left the wrong way but there was a guy running for dear life because he didn't want to get left and pay his way all the way back I got left before it's not fun just throwing out some tips I want to thank all my old subscribers and all the new subscribers that have come on all the people that I've met in Europe uh, the travelers the vloggers also I want to thank Loopsy um, I actually met him down there too his beats are fire and you can check it out on his website. Uh, also, Brian and Jess, I appreciate y'all letting me hold the footage because my camera died. And Felicia. Hope to see y'all next time. I'm out. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we found a spot. But look at this beautifulness. All that melanin. That is what I've not seen yet. But I have seen beautiful women here. We got the military down here. And I just learned something new right here. If you're on these back streets of Nepali right here, they were charging three. Look, they're one euro here for the souvenirs. Just to help people. One euro here. So they're known for pizza. Let's try. All right, now I'm gonna keep it 100% authentic with you all. I did not enjoy this. Um, I don't understand Italian, so I couldn't tell them what I want. But this is definitely not what I wanted. <laughs> My fault. All right. However, the bread was amazing. <laughs>